praise belongs to God, before whose oneness there is no before, unless the before is He, and after whose singleness there is no after, unless the after is He. He is, and there is not with Him any before or after, above or below, closeness or distance, how or where or when, time or moment or duration, manifested existence or place. And He is now as He has always been. He is the one without oneness and the single without singleness. He is not composed of name and named, for His name is Him and His named is Him, and there is no name or named other than Him. He is the first without firstness and the last without lastness. He is the apparent without appearance and the hidden without hiddenness. I mean that He is the very existence of the letters of the names, the first and the last, the apparent and the hidden. There is no first or last, apparent or hidden except Him, without the letters which form these divine names becoming Him and without Him becoming these letters. He is not in anything, and no thing is in Him, whether entering into Him or coming out of Him. It is in this way that you should know Him, and not through theoretical knowledge, reason, understanding or conjecture, nor with the senses, the external eye or interior sight or perception. No one sees Him except Himself, no one reaches Him except Himself, and no one knows Him except Himself. He knows Himself through Himself, and He sees Himself by means of Himself. No one but He sees Him. His veil is His oneness, since nothing veils Him other than Him. His own being veils Him. His being is concealed by His oneness without any condition. No one other than He sees Him. No sent prophet, perfect saint or angel brought close knows Him. His prophet is He. His messenger is He. His message is He and His word is He. He sent Himself from Himself, through Himself to Himself. There is no intermediary or means other than Him. There is no difference between the sender, that which is sent, and the one to whom it is sent. The very existence of the prophetic message is His existence. There is no existence to any other who could pass away, or have a name or be named. Because of this, the prophet, God bless him and give him peace, said, Whoever knows their self, knows their Lord. He also said, I knew my Lord through my Lord. What the prophet pointed out by that is that you are not you, but you are him, and there is no you. It is not that he enters into you, or that you enter into him, or that he comes out of you, or that you come out of him. That does not mean that you have being, and you are qualified by this or that attribute. What is meant is that you never were and never will be, whether through yourself or through him or in him or with him. You have neither ceased to be, nor are you existent. You are him and he is you, without any of these imperfections. If you know your existence in this way, then you know God, and if not, then not. Most of those who claim to know God make the knowledge of God dependent on the passing away of existence, and on the passing away of that passing away. That is clearly an error and a misconception. The knowledge of God does not require the passing away of existence, or the passing away of that passing away, because things have no existence, and what does not exist cannot pass away. Passing away implies the prior existence of the thing that passes away. If you know yourself without existing and passing away, then you know God, and if not, then not. Your being is nothing, and whatever is nothing cannot be placed in relationship to anything else, whether it is capable of passing away or not, and whether it is existent or non-existent. Because now is eternity without beginning, and now is eternity without end, and now is timelessness. God is the very being of eternity without beginning, eternity without end, and timelessness 
even though in reality there is no eternity without beginning, eternity without end or timelessness. If someone asks, what is the way to knowledge of the self and knowledge of God? The answer is, it consists in being aware that God is and nothing is with him, and he is now as he has always been. When this secret is revealed to you, you will know that you are not other than God, but that you, yourself, are the object of your quest. You do not need to get rid of yourself. You have not ceased, nor will you cease to exist without time and without moments, as we have already mentioned. You will see his attributes as your attributes, your exterior as his exterior, your interior as his interior, your first as his first, and your last as his last, without any doubt or uncertainty. You will see your attributes to be his attributes, and your essence to be his essence. You thought you were you, but you are not you and never were. For if you were you, you would be a lord and the second of two. Stop what you were thinking. Between his being and your being there is no difference. He is no different from you, nor you from him. If you say in ignorance you are other, you are stubborn. But if your ignorance disappears, you are submissive. For your union is separation, your separation union and your distance is closeness. Through that you become suitable. Abandon the intellect and understand by the light of unveiling, so that what you are safeguarding does not escape you. No one has truly reached him unless they see their attributes to be the attributes of God and their essence to be the essence of God, without their essence or their attributes ever entering into God or coming out of him and without passing away in relation to God or remaining in God. They see that their self has never been their own, not that it was and then it passed away, because there is no self except his self and there is no being except his being. This is what the prophet was alluding to when he said, do not curse time because God is time and God, who is blessed and exalted, is unblemished by any associate or equal or like. It is also reported that the prophet said, the high God says, O child of Adam, I was sick and you did not visit me. I was hungry and you did not feed me, I asked of you, and you did not give to me. This alludes to the fact that the being of the person who asks is his being. When that is accepted, it is also accepted that your being is his being, and the being of all created things, whether substance or accident, is his being. When the secret of an atom is discovered, the secret of all created things is made clear, whether they are apparent or hidden. You do not see the two worlds as other than God, without the two worlds and their names and what they name existing, or rather, their names and what they name and their existence are him without any doubt. You do not see God as having ever created anything, but as being every day in a different configuration, which sometimes reveals him and sometimes conceals him without any condition, since he is the first and the last, the apparent and the hidden and he has knowledge of everything. He manifests himself in his oneness and hides himself in his singularity. He is the first in his essence and his self-subsistence, and the last in his everlastingness. He is the very being of the name the first, and the name the last, of the name the apparent and the name the hidden. He is his own name and what is named, just as his existence is necessary. The non-existence of what is other than him is necessary. What you think is other than him is not other than him. He is free from there being any other than him. Indeed, other than him is him without any otherness, whether this is with him or in him, inwardly or outwardly. Whoever is qualified in this way has innumerable attributes without limit or end. Just as the person whose physical form passes away is deprived of all their attributes, whether praiseworthy or blameworthy, so the person who dies a mystical death has all their attributes, whether praiseworthy or blameworthy, taken away from them and God comes into their place in all their states. 
the essence of God comes into the place of their essence, and the attributes of God come into the place of their attributes. Because of this, the Prophet said, Die before you die, that is, know yourself before you die. He also said, God says, My servant continues to approach me with free acts until I love him, and when I love him, I am his hearing, his sight, his hand, which refers to the fact that whoever knows their self sees their whole being as the very being of God, without any change in their essence or attributes. There is no need for any change since that person was not the existence of their own essence, but was simply ignorant of the knowledge of their self. When you know yourself, your egoism disappears, and you know that you are no other than God. If you had an independent existence, you would have no need of passing away or of self-knowledge. You would therefore be a Lord apart from Him, but there is no Lord apart from God, who is blessed and exalted. The benefit of the knowledge of the self is to know for certain that you are neither existent nor non-existent, that you are not, never have been, and never will be. In this way, the meaning of there is no God but God becomes clear, there is no divinity other than Him, being belongs to none but Him, there is no other except Him, there is no God but He. If someone says, you make his lordship superfluous. The reply is, I do not make his lordship superfluous, because he has not stopped being both ruler and ruled, just as he has never stopped being both creator and what is created, and he is now as he has always been. His creativity and his lordship do not need what is created or subject to him. When he brought the creatures into existence, he was already endowed with all his attributes and he is now as he has always been. There is no difference in his oneness between the new and the eternal. The new requires his manifestation, and the eternal requires his remaining hidden. His exterior is identical to his interior, and his interior is identical to his exterior. His first is the same as his last, and his last is the same as his first, and all is one and the one is all. The existence of the creatures and their non-existence are the same. If it were not so, it would require the origination of something which was not already in his oneness. That would imply imperfection and his oneness is far more exalted than that. When you know yourself in this way, without attributing any opposite like equal or associate to God, then you really know yourself. That is why the Prophet said, Whoever knows their self knows their Lord, and not whoever gets rid of their self knows their Lord because he knew and saw that there is nothing other than him. Then he pointed out that the knowledge of the self is the knowledge of God. In other words, know yourself or know your being, because you are not you, but you do not know it. That is, know that your being is neither your being nor other than your being. You are neither existent nor non-existent, nor other than existent nor other than non-existent. Your being and your non-being are his being, and his being is the same as your being and non-being. If someone now asks you, what is the way to union when you assert that there is no other than him, yet one thing cannot be united to itself? Then this is the reply. There is no doubt that in reality there is neither union nor separation, distance or closeness, since union is only possible between two things, and if there is only one, there can be neither union nor separation. Union requires two things, which are either similar, in which case they are equal, or dissimilar, in which case they are opposites. However, he is exalted far above having any opposite or equal. Therefore union lies in something other than union, closeness in something other than closeness and distance in something other than distance. There is union without union, closeness without closeness and distance without distance. If someone asks, we understand union, without union, but what does closeness without closeness and distance without distance mean? Then the answer is, I mean that in those times of closeness and distance you were not anything other than God 
but you did not know yourself and you were not aware that you were always Him without you. When you reach God, that is, when you know yourself in a way that is beyond all condition, you know that you are Him and you did not know before whether you were Him or other than Him. When knowledge comes upon you, you know that it is through God that you know God, not through yourself. Most of those who know, who think that they know themselves and their Lord, and think that they are free of the bonds of existence, declare that the way can only be travelled by passing away, then by the passing away of passing away. If, someone says, you point out that your knowledge of yourself is the knowledge of God, but the one who knows their self is other than God. So how can that which is other than God know God and reach union with Him? The answer is, whoever knows their self knows that their being is not their being, nor other than their being, but that they are the very being of God. To summarize, the existence of things is His existence, without them existing. But do not fall into confusion, and do not let these illusions lead you to imagine that God is created. One of those who know has said, the Sufi is uncreated. It is like that after the complete unveiling and dissipation of doubts and conjecturing. But this spiritual nourishment is only for the person whose nature is larger than the two worlds. As for the person whose nature is only as large as the two worlds, it is not suitable for them for it is greater than the two worlds. Finally, you need to know that the seer and the seen, the one who finds and what is found, the knower and the known, the creator and the created, the perceiver and the perceived are one. Just as his being is beyond all condition, so the vision, knowledge and perception which he has of himself are without condition. If someone asks, how do you view all the repulsive and desirable things? For example, when we see dung or carry on, do we say it is God? Then the reply is, God forbid that God, who is exalted and sanctified, should be any such thing. Our conversation is with those who do not see dung as dung or carry on as carry on. We are only speaking with those who are endowed with inner vision and not with those who are inwardly blind. Anyone who does not know their self is blind and does not. Until their blindness and lack of vision disappears, they will not grasp these meanings. Our conversation is with God, not with other than God, and not with the inwardly blind. Whoever reaches this spiritual station knows that they are no other than God. We are speaking with those who have determination and energy in seeking knowledge of their self in order to know God, and who keep fresh in their heart the image of their seeking and longing for union with God, and not with those without aim or intention. Everything that we are saying is the very meaning of God's words. Eyes do not perceive Him, but He perceives the eyes. That is, there is no one else in existence, so no one has sight which can perceive Him. If it were conceivable that there were someone other than Him, then it would follow that this other could perceive Him. But God has informed us in his saying, Eyes do not perceive him that there is no other except him. I knew the Lord through the Lord, without doubt or uncertainty. My essence is really his essence without lack or imperfection. There is no otherness between them and myself is the place where the invisible appears. Since I have known myself without mixture or blemish, I have reached union with my beloved without distance or closeness. I received a gift overflowing without any giving or intermingling. Myself did not vanish in him, nor does the one who vanished remain. If, someone asks, you affirm God and you deny the existence of everything else, so what are these things that you see? The answer is this. These words are for those who see nothing other than God. We have no discussion with those who do see something other than God, for they only see what they see. Whoever knows their self sees nothing except God, but whoever does not know their self does not see God. Each receptacle only exudes what is in it. We have already explained a great deal, and if we explained more, whoever does not see will still not see, understand or comprehend. But whoever does see, 
sees, understands and comprehends already. A hint is enough for the one who has reached union. As for the person who has not reached union, they will not arrive by theoretical teaching, instruction, repetition, reason or learning, but only by putting themselves in the service of an eminent master who has arrived, and a wise teacher, following the spiritual path in order to be guided by their light and progress by means of their spiritual will, and reaching in this way what they are seeking, if God wills. May God grant us success in what he loves and in what satisfies him in word and deed, knowledge and practice, light and guidance. There is no power or ability except in God, the sublime, the magnificent. <laughs>